Hey guys, welcome back. We are going to review Bambula X1 Carbon today. It is the most expensive printer that I bought so far. It comes with MSRP at $1,449 with the AMS combo. After tax and shipping, it is around $1,600. It is a lot of money. You may also hear that Bambula is going to have a new flagship printer announced this year. Is the right time to buy this printer now? And is it worth the money? We are going to find out today. Over the years, Bambula and X1 Carbon might be the most popular 3D printer in the market. Everyone talks about it, every YouTuber makes a video about it. You may already know all the technical spec, but let me briefly introduce this printer to you if I'm new to 3D printing. X1 Carbon is the first printer Bambula introduced to the market. It is also currently their flagship printer. X1 project started on December 2020, according to their Kickstarter campaign page. Over the year of 2021 and 2022, hundreds of different reversion and prototype machines were made and tested. June 2022, they started a mass production and launched their Kickstarter. Meanwhile, at the end of 2022 and the entire 2023, X1 Carbon became the printer that everyone talks about across different internet platforms. It is one of the most popular printer and one of the best performance printer in terms of speed printing quality, capability, reliability, set by many. Let's take a look of our printer. It is boxy style printer with a core XY motion system. Different with the most common i3 structure 3D printer, core XY structure printer does not move the printer bed back and forth. It moves down as a plastic builder on the build plate. The X and Y axes are used two-step motor to control its motion. The extruder stay in one stationary plane. This structure comes with many advantages compared to i3 structure that we mentioned above. It is superior in terms of printing speed, stability when printing big objects, better accuracy, reduce overall footprint of the printer, and many other advantages. But it is more complex, harder to work with, and costs a lot more money in materials. X1 Carbon perfectly carry those advantages. As Bamboo has state, it is able to achieve 20,000 mm per second acceleration and 500 mm per second two-hand moving speed. With 32 cubic feet mm hot end flow rate, it could achieve insane printing speed like this 25-minute bench test print that come with this printer. But in reality, limits by the model overall geometry, size, filament, and other factors. You are rarely able to achieve that kind of printing speed. Besides marketing slogan theme, it is more like telling you that that's upper limit of the printer. Don't get me wrong, it is still an insanely fast 3D printer. Compared to my old Ender 3, it is three or four times faster depends on model that you are printing. X1 Carbon has two carbon fiber rods on the X axis and four linear rods on the Y axis. Three lead screws on the Z axis, synchronized with the bell and driven by a one step motor under the base cover. The foot metal hot end is able to achieve 300 Celsius maximum temperature with a hardened steel nozzle and hardened extruder gear. It should be able to print most of common material in the market and some exotic film like carbon fiber, polycarbonate, nylon carbon fiber blend. The build plate size is 256mm square with a 256mm Z height. The printer pad is also able to achieve 120 Celsius maximum temperature on 110 volt region, 110 Celsius degrees maximum temperature for 22 volt region. X1 Carbon comes with a two side engineer plate, with one side cold plate smooth surface for PLA and other side for PTG, polycarbonate, and other materials. Even though X1 Carbon does not have active heating chamber, but with full enclosure printing space, and radiation heat from heat bed and nozzle, the printer is able to achieve 50 Celsius chamber temperature during printing the ABS or carbon fiber filament. There is also one closed rule chamber fan to regulate internal temperature to prevent the heat creep on the extruder and prevent part damage. X1 Carbon comes with the automatic bed leveling feature that automatically measures and compensates the imperfections on the bead plate, so your first layer will be always look good. It will run some self calibration during the initial setup. It includes resonation compensation and active noise cancellation. Compared to budget 3D printer that I have, X1 Carbon is very much take over all, all the calibration work for you to help you easily get a start printing. You could operate this machine with a 5-inch touchscreen, 
it has very high resolution, the refresh rate and response speed are good. All common features and our advanced setting are all well organized. It is very simple to use on a daily basis, but you might get overwhelming by all those advanced features setting. It might take a few days to get some research done to figure out what are those features means and what do they do. Bambula has one wiki page that covers all the information you need there. In my normal routine, I mostly use a slicer to send a printing profile wirelessly. The touch screen was not used that frequently. Besides those basic meat and potatoes, X1 Carbon also with bell and whistles to fit its flagship position. Microlader is integrated with Exuder Head with algorithm to achieve feature like flow rate calibration for different filaments, first layer inspection, helping out bad leveling, spaghetti detection, and it also will able to detect different pupil play, detect pupil play position, and other features. All those features are worked flawlessly from my past few weeks of experience. You don't notice that much when it's working, but it just helps you out in the background. Other than that, a lot of other features like automatic cleaning and wipe the nozzle before every print, automatic cut the filament for multicolor printing for AMS, cross root control chamber temperature regulator fan, extra power cooling fan, air filter, dough sensor, filament runoff sensor, power loss recovery, internal LED light, and 1080p camera. You could also use your mobile app to skip one of the multiple parts in one print job. It is very helpful when you encounter some print fail on one part, but you do not want to waste your filament, so you can just skip that specific part on the entire print job and continue of the rest part. The AMS system that I ordered with the printer is able to print up to four different colors. With additional attachment, you're able to synchronize a total of four AMS units in one printer to achieve 16 color printing capability. Quite impressive, right? If you are using Bambula official filament, you're able to automatically recognize the color and preload the filament setting for you. At the same time, if you are not printing with a multicolor, AMS is still a good addition to keep your filament dry in there. You could put four rows of filament in there and set it as the same type of filament from Bambula Studio Slicer. So one sprue of the film runs out, it will automatically switch a new sprue during the print. This feature does not require Bambula on filament though. Additionally, if you are totally new to 3D printing and just want to try out some new prints before you learn all the turns and settings from the Slicer, you could simply use Bambula Handy mobile app and select the model that you like from their model website Maker World. You could simply set up a print with just a few clicks on your phone. Enough talking. Let's head to the printing assignment and see how well it does. As always, I'm going to run some calibration print first and test with different filament and see how well the printer performed. I'm just going to leave the most slicer setting default just to see how well it performs right out of the box without any tweaks. Bambula used its own slicer called Bambula Studio. It is based on the Prusa slicer. After downloading their clouds at home, you are able to send the print wirelessly after model is sliced. Let's start with a functional test. I'll run a print that comes with the printer and confirm everything is working correctly. This 25 minute bench looks great. All the layer finish and detail all looks decent. Continue with this bench that I sliced myself. With all the default settings from Bamboo Studio Slicer, this bench should take around 39 minutes to finish. Besides, there's one cooling line here. This bench should turn out almost perfect. I wonder how well X1 Carbon will do with the torrenting with the default setting. The flow calibration function is unable before print, since I have switched to another filament. Block inserts are smooth before 0.1mm torrenting. There is a strong resistance on 0.1mm. I think that's most it can go. Circle insert is very similar, strong resistance at 0.1mm. 
It is good enough with the default setting, but still room for improvement and make adjustments on the slicer setting. But we are not going to do it on today's video. Let's continue to run a multicolor print and confirm AMS system and automatic film swap feature work correctly. The current shortcoming for AMS is that there will be a lot of filming ways during color change. Simply adding more identical model into the same print work is one of the options to compensate the filming waste. This print turned out okay. The color transition with a different film looks green. There is a very small amount of string appears on print. Let's continue with the PETG filament. You will first notice that there are two obvious different surface finish. This is due to the cooling fan. On big overhand and small perimeter area, the cooling fan is kicking on and cools the filament. So you will get different surface finish. There is some overhand issue under the heart. This is due to the model. Other than that, this print turned out pretty good. This model has a very small contour surface on the build plate. I switched the build plate to engineer play side. The model fills off the build plate during printing. The spaghetti detection was turned on, but it did not detect the failed print until the nozzle hits a fail part and knock off the front cover. Luckily, this incident did not cause any damage to the extruder and rerun the model. It finished the print with no issue. The print turned out very good, all the overhand and detail finish looks decent. Continuing with the TPU filament, I have directly inserted TPU from the back of the printer instead of go through AMS system. Printing TPU on AMS could lead in filament jamming. This TPU coaster turned out great. All the layers are properly bound together, very little amount of stringing. Overhand on the hex gun looks clean too. I'll continue to test some of the more exotic filament. Let's start with the polycarbonate. I'm applying glue stick on the build plate. This print almost across the entire build plate, but still stayed really well and until the print finished. As you can see, print turned out perfect. It has very good layer adhesion, good surface finish, and it just looks faultless. Continue with the grow in the dark ABS. This model is a bit hard to print due to there is a very small contact surface on the build plate. I have put brims on and it turned out great. This print is actually printed after those carbon fiber filament test, which you will see later. There's still a lot of debris remain on the extruder. You can see the bottom area has a lot of grit out due to that reason. It is a bit hard to capture color on the camera. Bambula include the sample film with the X1 carbon. All the slicer setting is default on the Bambula Studio. When I load the film on the AMS, it automatically recognizes the film and pull out the setting for me. I did not fully cover the entire first layer parameter on this print with the glue stick. So the edge curved out during print. Something more serious also happened. The extruder was clogged by the carbon fiber blend filament. I was not able to pull out the film after a few attempts. I end up disassemble the entire extruder assemble and pull out extruder gear assemble. Mm -hmm. 
You can see, this filling was deformed its shape in between the exuder gear and completely caught from pulling in and out of an exuder hole. Due to very limited space within the extruder, I have to use one small tweezer to grind off the film, little by little, in order to remove it. Two hours later, I finally got it fixed and put it back on together. This time, I have to reduce the max rallying metric speed from default, from 15 to 5. We run the prints again. Beside this line over here, the entire model has good layer finish and good layer adhesion. I continue to try with another tricky filament, nylon carbon fiber blend. This filament has 20% carbon fiber blend into a nylon. It has very good mechanical property, but it is very sensitive to the moisture and really hard to print. So I run a test print before drying and run another test print after drying at 70 Celsius for 24 hours. Let's directly see the print comparison. You can see after drying, the print looks significantly better. Next, PAHTCF was tested. It is also known as PA12CF. The print finished with no issue. It turned out pretty good. It has very unique gloss and rough finish. The print in place drawing also functional. I just need to wash it off bottom layer glue after recording. Final thoughts of Bambula X1 Carbon. Bambula printer was indeed the most popular printer for the past years, either from words of people's mouth or their heavily pushed ad across different online platforms. X1 Carbon as their current flagship printer, as it already had been released more than one and a half year into the market. It is still one of the best rate printer in the hobby level machine. In terms of printing speed, printing quality, technology, and reliability. If you don't consider the price tag, I'll remove the Li one of best and change it to the best 3D printer in the hobby level machine currently. As we all live in a budget life, I probably won't be able to afford this printer if I don't sell some of my old printers and earn some vouchers from Maker World with my design. A thousand six hundred dollars is really hard to digest, and I've been asked myself many times under its cover. P1S is same as X1 Carbon with identical frame structure and a motion system. Are all those fancy features worth extra amount of money? From my personal perspective, I would rather to have P1S with a lot less money, but still keep the core feature in terms of speed and printing quality. Since there are technically the same printer beside the upgrades on X1 Carbon. Many people will argue that X1 Carbon have a way more features compared to the P1S. It has nice touch screen and micro radar and so on. From my normal workflow, I barely had a chance to use a touch screen because I mainly use the slicer directly sent the file wirelessly to the printer. In the first week of use, I do get wowed a lot by all those features from X1 Carbon. But the second week, I rarely use those extra features like viewplate recognition, spaghetti detection, and other features. I even turn off some of them. Sometimes it will give me an error call and stop the printer if I mistakenly pick the wrong viewplate from the slicer. But I could also see how much those features are going to help if you are a beginner. It just simply pushes the printer capability to another level. Is the P1S better or X1 Carbon is the call? I think it really depends on your budget and demand. There's nothing wrong to spending more money and get fully loaded function. But if you are like me and doing a lot of things on budget, and constantly having complaints from wives about bill spending on the Hobbit, I would like to provide more information before you make that call. Let's simply summarize with a few pros and cons for this printer. Let's talk about pros first. Number one, speed. I'll be totally honest with you, if I wasn't come from P1S to this X1 Carbon, it would really shock me a lot how fast 
and how good this printer is. It could handle most of film with high-speed printing. If you are switching film frequently, you could simply enable the flow rate calibration, and the printer will take over all the manual work from you with that micro later. I got very consistent good results across different film. But I also want to clarify that the maximum printing speed is nothing more than a marketing slogan thing. It really depends on what film you are printing, the maximum flow rate of the film, the model size, complex level, and other settings. Let's say in a simple measure. It could print faster than my Ender 3 from 2 to 4 or 5 times faster and still retain a good printing quality. Number 2. Capability X1 Carbon comes with a hot nozzle and extruded gear. With a maximum nozzle temperature of 300 Celsius degrees, 120 Celsius degrees on the bed temperature, and a full enclosure printing space, it could handle most of common film like PLA, PDG, and some not so common film like PLA carbon fiber, nylon carbon fiber, with a passive heating chamber that could reach 50 Celsius maximum. It could do this and draw with those harder to print filaments. If you switch build plate to engineer plate side and apply some grooves on the surface before printing, those exotic filament will still stick on the build plate really well. Number 3. Reliability I was putting question mark on the reliability of this machine when I first had my P1S. Since the Core XY printer is a lot more complex compared to the best linear, and also the durability of the carbon fiber rod is something that I concern. But after running 900 hours on the P1S with a stock part, it has changed my opinion. I have mainly used that machine for design prototype. It does not have an insane number of hours put into the machine, but it has been constantly running different small prints. I have encountered very few failures besides related to the AMS issue and a nozzle clock due to some filament. So I will consider it is a fairly reliable machine in my usage environment. I don't know how well and how good it will last nef a thousand hour or ten thousand hour, but at this point, it is a reliable machine to me. Number four, Bamboo Light ecosystem. I think X1 Carbon might be the most beginner friendly machine out there. The initial setup is simple, it does not require you to do motion system adjustment. There might be something learning curve and how to use a slicer and how to work with this machine and all those technologies. But after spending some time and learning those things, you'll very much enjoy 3D printing without twinkling much of your 3D printer. The mobile app Bambula Handy and Bambula Official Filament will be able to let you set up a print just a few clicks on your phone. This is a great way to introduce someone who just new to the 3D printing. Let's continue with cons. Number 1. Price Now I'm putting money at a first con. It is purely because my personal perspective. It was a little bit too expensive to me. If you ask me, is X1 Carbon worth the money? I'll tell you 10 out of 10 times yes. It is worth the money. However, from the money versus value perspective, I'll pick P1S 10 out of 10 times. It is simply from my usage routine. I don't need all those fancy features that add on the price. But a lot of people might like all those fancy features. It's up to you. Number 2. The noise. On December 2023, on December 2023, Bambula have launched their update on X1 Carbon to adopt the active noise cancellation feature on X1 Carbon. It has greatly reduced depth of motor noise. However, the noise from the motion system is still there. The loud noise is still able to pass through the drywall and drive me crazy at night. My X1 carbon unit also has some of the front case rattling sound. I thought it was something normal until I do some quick research online. It is apparently something caused by the loosened bolts on the front cover. It also led me to complain about some of the feet and finish of my machine. At $1,600, I'm expecting some of a better feet and finish. Consider this machine is out of stock after holiday sale. I have to wait almost three weeks before it start to ship. So my unit was fresh out of symbol line and travel in a cargo ship across half of the plan. Well, maybe it's a bit rushed out of the symbol line. But at the end of the day, those are non-performance related little feet and finish things, I guess I can get over with it. Number 3. The AMS issue I have to say, the Bambula AMS system is currently the best multicolor solution at this price point. It is relatively reliable, can print up to 16 color, and easy to use. But there is a big learning curve how to operate it in a daily basis. 
You'll need to learn some of the don't do to your AMS and learn how to fix some of the common issues. Things like don't put TPU and some other filament in the AMS, don't use filament spool that is nearly empty. You also need to learn how to fix fail to pull the filament out. Even if you get all those figured out, there's still chances it will fail randomly once in a while due to random reason. But it does not happen a lot. I'll still consider it is relatively reliable in general. So other general information things I want to mention is that this machine is highly integrated. It means it will be hard to take apart and do your own repair. Bambula does make a very, very good documentary on Bambula Wiki. It basically covers every single part, assemble and disassemble. In general case, you very much don't need to take it apart besides those simple regular manual things. As I mentioned earlier, it is really surprised me that my P1S with stock nozzle and everything still running strong after 900 hours. As you know already, Bambula machine is closed sourced. There are not many mods and things you can play around. Bambula announced on the other day they'll give the user the option to go for non-official framework. But it is a one-way ticket. You will commit to award your warranty before you do that. I don't think there's any reason I'll go for that, but someone might like it, so just for your information. If you are someone who plans to keep a long term, due to there are so many users out there, or the parts are easy to find. You can find the most of a replacement part from Bambula official website. There are also many third-party parts available all over the place. Bambula announced that there will be one new flagship printer on 2024, but we don't know when it will be released. X1 Carbon is a very mature product at this point. All those small issues they have addressed with the framework update, design, and manufacturing improvement over the years. On the other hand, new product indeed will have more features and new technologies, but you might also expect it to experience some of the early adopter issues. Should you wait for a new flagship, or just swipe your credit card and enjoy it now? I'll leave it for you. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next video. Great, so you just merge a few printers into one? And make some space for the next one? It has greatly reduced step noise motor. The loud noise is still able to. The, the, the loud.